Hey everyone, it's Miranda with Simply Noteful. Today, we're going to take a deeper dive into the grouping feature in Noteful. I know that might sound a little boring at first, but it's actually really fun once you understand the order you should group things in and how grouping affects your elements. We'll start really simple and then end with something a little more complicated, like making these color changing mini calendars I used in my symptom tracker. So if that sounds exciting, keep watching. Before we jump in, I just wanted to answer a few questions people have asked in the comments. I have been digital planning in Noteful for a little over three years now, and I am definitely not an expert, but I have picked up a few tricks along the way. I also know that when you first get started, everything feels really complicated, but stick with it. The more you play around in your planner, the more you're going to love it. So ask any questions you have, and I will do my best to answer them. One of the questions someone asked is, what is the difference between duplicate and copy and paste? When you use the duplicate option, Noteful makes one copy of whatever you have selected. So if you just need one copy and you wanna keep it on the same page, duplicate is the best option. But if you're duplicating something multiple times or you want to use it on different pages in your planner, copy and paste is the better choice. You can copy something once and then paste it as many times as you need, and you can paste it on any page you want. So just to keep it simple, duplicate makes one copy on the same page, while copy and paste lets you create multiple copies and use them anywhere in your planner. And yes, in some of my videos, I accidentally say duplicate when I'm really copying and pasting. That's partly because I switch back and forth between Keynote, which doesn't even have a duplicate option. So if I mix those up, just ignore me. I promise I'm not trying to confuse you. Another question I saw was, after you resize your stickers, how do you move them? You should be able to move them just by reselecting them after you resize them. Just make sure that you have the lasso tool selected. If you're on your text tool, or the shapes tool, it won't let you select or move that sticker. But if I have my lasso tool selected, you can see that I can just tap on that sticker, move it anywhere I want and resize it. Also, make sure you're on the right layer. I know layers can feel a little confusing at first, but when you tap on these lines here, it opens up your layers panel and you can see a little thumbnail of what's on each layer. Just make sure you have the layer selected where you placed that sticker, otherwise it won't move. Okay, now let's talk about grouping. Grouping is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. I can lasso multiple elements on a page, tap group, and Noteful turns them into one single element. This comes in really handy when you're setting up like your weekly layout with something like these checkboxes. We talked a little about this in my last video, but in this one, I wanna go into a little bit more detail. I'm going to start by grabbing a square from the shapes tool, but you could use circles, stars, or any other shape you want. Then I'm going to adjust the corner roundness to whatever I think looks good. I'm gonna go with a five. Now I'll resize it. Now this is just a quick tip. When you tap the resize option, you'll see a dashed border that lets you resize the shape without stretching it or squishing it. This works with any shape, circles, triangles, stars, all of it. Once I have this square the perfect size, I'm going to tap copy. I'm not using duplicate here because I want more than one copy. So now I'm going to paste it and then paste it again. However many boxes I need for this section of my planner. Now I'm going to lasso these boxes and tap group. You can see that they turned into one single selection instead of three separate ones. This part is really important. When you group things together and then style them, everything in that group changes to that style. So you can see if I change the color, all of these boxes change color. If I change the opacity, all of the boxes change to that opacity. Now, let's say I'm setting up this page and I know I want to use these little check boxes for my top three tasks each day. I'll move them over to the left-hand side, then copy and paste them into each day of my week. 
I could leave it like this, but for me, when I change the color of my checkboxes, I want all of them to change together. If you want each section to be a different color, don't group them. But if you're like me and you want everything to change at once, go ahead and group all of these boxes together. Now that they're grouped, if I tap style and choose a new color, you can see that all of these boxes change at the same time. Next, I'm going to add some text. Once I have it looking exactly how I want it, I'll group the text together and move it into place. Now I can copy and paste that into each day of my week. If I really like how this looks and know I'm going to reuse it every week, I can lasso the entire thing and save it as a sticker. Then next week, all I have to do is tap my stickers button, find this layout and drop it onto the page. Everything is already sized perfectly. I just need to move it into place. When you save something as a sticker, it automatically groups everything together. So if I tap on it, go to style and change the color, you can see that everything changes, including the text. If you like that, great. But if you don't want your text changing colors, tap on it once and ungroup it. Now you can see that the text is ungrouped from the rest. From here, I can just tap on these check boxes, which are still grouped together and change their color. All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, you guys, now that we are all grouping masters, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. We are gonna make these color changing mini calendars. The first thing I'm going to do is go to a blank sheet of graph paper. I like using graph paper because it makes it so much easier to size things and get everything aligned correctly. Next, I'm going to grab my pen tool. I have the color set to black and the line size set to 0.6. And I'm going to draw a vertical line going down five boxes. Then I'm going to copy that line and paste it six more times. Now I'm going to draw a horizontal line going across seven boxes. And I'm going to duplicate that six more times. Perfect, now we have the grid for our mini calendar all set. I'm gonna use the lasso tool and group all of these lines together. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a square shape. I'll adjust the corner roundness to whatever I think looks good. I'm gonna go with a five and then I'm going to set it so that it fits over the calendar grid we just drew. You can make this any size that you think looks good with your grid. Now I'm going to tap style and change it to a shape with no fill and just a black border. Then I'll tap arrange and send it to the back because I want it to be behind the calendar grid. Next, I'm gonna duplicate this square and change the style to no border with a white fill. Once that's done, I'll send it to the back and resize it so it fits perfectly behind that black border. Now I'm gonna duplicate that square one more time and this one is going to be used for the shadow. I'll give it a black fill with no border, tap arrange and send it to the back. Then I'll move it slightly until I like how the shadow looks behind the other two shapes. Once it's in place, I'll tap style and adjust the opacity using the slider here. You can make the shadow really dark or really subtle, whatever you think looks good. Next, I'm going to add the little circle at the top. I'm just gonna grab the circle shape, tap resize, and size it so it fits nicely at the top. And I'll just adjust it until it looks right. Once that's done, I'm going to tap on that calendar grid and move it out of the way just for a second because I don't want to group that with these other shapes yet. Now I'm going to use the lasso tool to lasso the border box, the white box, the shadow, and the circle, and I'm going to group all of those together. Then I'll bring that calendar grid back on top of those group shapes and I'll group the grid together with them. I'm doing this in layers because I want to be able to ungroup things in stages later if I need to. 
Now it's time to draw the shapes that I want to be color changing. I'm going to grab another square and style it so that it fits on this mini calendar just where I want it. Once it looks good, I'll tap style and I'm going to change the color to blue just so you can see it really clearly. Then I'm going to grab a circle shape and do the same thing. I'll change it to blue also, tap resize, and I'll make it fit perfectly inside that black circle we added earlier so that that black circle acts like a border. Once these are set up, I'm going to move the group shapes out of the way for just a second because I want to group just the two shapes together that will be my color changing shapes. So I'm gonna lasso those and tap group. Now I'll move them back on top of the rest of the calendar and group everything together. At this point, I can resize this calendar, move it around, duplicate it if I only want one copy, or copy and paste it as many times as I want, either on this page or anywhere else in my planner. Now, when I try to change the color by tapping style, you can see that it changes everything and I don't want that. So what I need to do is tap on the calendar once and ungroup it one time. Now you can see that the two shapes I want to be color changing are separate from the rest of the calendar. From here, I can just tap on those two shapes, tap style and choose any color I want. Once I'm happy with it, I can group everything back together again. One other really cool thing you can do is adjust the calendar grid to match the actual days of the month. To do that, I'm just going to ungroup the mini calendar two times. Now you can see that the grid is ungrouped from the rest of the calendar. I'll move it off to the side just so it's easier to work with. Then I'll ungroup it one more time. And now all of these lines are ungrouped from each other. So if January starts on Thursday, I can shorten these lines so that the first day starts on a Thursday. I can do the same thing for the end of the month, for example, if it ends on Friday. Once I have the lines adjusted, I'll lasso them, group them back together, and move it back into place, and then group the grid with the other mini calendar shapes, but not the color changing ones yet. Finally, I'll lasso everything, including the color changing shapes, and group it all together. And that's really all there is to it. You can make your own color changing mini calendars. And now that you understand how grouping affects different elements, there's so many cool things you can create in your digital bullet journal. I hope this wasn't super confusing. I'm hoping that seeing it visually along with the explanation makes it easier to understand, but just have fun with it. Creating your own layouts can be so relaxing. It's honestly one of my favorite things to do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you wanna see or if you have any questions, I will try my best to answer them in the next video. Thank you, bye.